The same nuclear fusion that powers our sun is unleashed. The star is born. Radiation from the star generates a stellar wind that sweeps away leftover dust and debris. Some of the dust survives and remains in orbit around the newborn star. Over millions of years, the dust sticks together, forming knots that grow into asteroids, and the asteroids grow into planets. These planets migrate through the disk until they find a stable orbit. This is why Bellerophon is so close to its parent star. But one newly discovered world has found its stable orbit in a place no planet should ever go. 2001. Hubble Space Telescope is directed to an obscure star some 150 light years away from Earth in the constellation of Pegasus. This is the same region where Bellerophon was found six years earlier. Hubble is tracking another hot Jupiter, discovered by astronomer Jeff Marcy. But this one is different from Bellerophon. You've probably heard of the planet HD 209458b. It's a terrible name. A terrible name for a terrible place. HD 209458b has been dubbed by some as Osiris, after the Egyptian god of the dead. Osiris is over 200 times more massive than Earth. It has migrated perilously close to its sun at a mere four million miles from the blazing solar surface. Osiris broils in a planetary hell. The average daily temperature on Osiris is over 2,000 degrees. Forget global warming. This is global frying, and it causes Osiris to lose an estimated 550,000 tons of air every second. There's a leak of gas, a steady stream of hydrogen and helium, and that's making a big, huge cloud all around the planet. Its atmosphere is bleeding into space. Scientists speculate that a colossal trail of gas spirals behind the planet for thousands of miles. OSIRIS presents an unprecedented opportunity for astronomers. Using Hubble, they analyze the alien planet's bloated atmosphere. This is the absolutely first time where we could tell what is the composition of the atmosphere of an extrasolar planet. Surprisingly, Hubble detects many of the basic chemicals needed for life. Sodium, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. But Osiris is far too hot for life as we know it. There may be other forms of life, however, that thrive on higher temperatures. But there's no solid surface as we know it on a hot Jupiter. So this life would have to be just tiny little microbes floating around on aerosols. And on our own Earth, we have life that floats around in our atmosphere. But that life didn't start there. So life almost certainly would not exist on hot Jupiters. Astronomers have discovered many hot Jupiters since Bellerophon was found in 1995. But conditions on these worlds rule them out as places where the drama of life can unfold. One of these gas giants is a planet that teases the rules of evolution. Astronomer Jeff Marcy discovers something shocking about a planet orbiting a star called 16 Cygnus b. 
located some 70 light years away in the constellation of Cygnus, the swan. The planet was clearly in an elongated orbit, bringing the planet close to and then far from the host star. And this, of course, defied our expectations based on our own solar system, where all of the planets go around our sun in nearly circular orbits like phonograph grooves in a record. Like a giant yo-yo in space, the gas giant swings back and forth across its solar system. That is like the Earth swooping 25 million miles closer to the sun, then slinging past Mars all the way out towards Jupiter every year. And like all of the gas giants in our solar system, this yo-yo planet might have an entourage of moons. Marcy speculates that one of these moons could be similar to Earth. And here's where the interesting story begins. Imagine a rocky moon with lakes, oceans, maybe streams and waterfalls on the surface. The moon orbiting its planet, the two of them orbiting the host star. Unlike the airless moon that circles the Earth, this moon is a world with extreme seasons. On Earth, the seasons are caused by the tilt of our planet. Here, they are caused by the elongated orbit. These poor planets that are in these elongated elliptical orbits suffer terrible changes in their climate throughout a year. As they make their closest approach, the yo-yo planet and its moon are blowtorched by the star. Summer begins. The atmosphere on the Earth-like moon is savaged with raging storms. Category 5 hurricanes on Earth are tiny eddies compared to the monster vortexes that form here. The clouds thicken as the water evaporates. Temperatures rise dramatically. Any water or gases would heat up, and indeed the oceans would boil into steam, so you'd end up with a big steam bath. During the peak of the summer, the entire moon is smothered in 800 degree temperatures. This is the closest approach to the star. During its 26-month orbit, the summer season is barely two months long. But what a season. The planet and its moon swing away from the furnace of the star. Temperatures fall to ranges we would find temperate and comfortable. With the coming of fall, the rains return to the parched and roasted moon. Dry ocean basins are replenished, and the seas rise to form new shorelines. Tranquility prevails as the yo-yo planet and its moon slip into the deep freeze of winter. Now, over 200 million miles from the star, the daytime sky is dark. Temperatures hover around 260 degrees.